in the state of Georgia that we had the governor, Brian Kemp, who signed into law an anti-abortion bill. And the reason that especially Georgia has been at the center of a big controversy, even more so than Mississippi, even more so than Iowa, they passed a heartbeat bill. So any child beyond the point that the child has a heartbeat, which by the way is very early, that any time beyond that point where you can detect the heartbeat via ultrasound, that would not be allowed anymore, which is great. That's a big win. But the reason that this was so heated and the reason that everybody was making a big deal about Georgia specifically is that especially in recent years, Georgia has been a hot spot for Hollywood. You'll remember that The Walking Dead was filmed largely in Atlanta. And that's one of the biggest shows on AMC. You'll also notice that just about every Marvel Universe movie, if you will watch the credits and watch all the way to the end, and you probably have, because let's face it, you want to see the secret ending, the cameo, or, or whatever else happens after the credits in a Marvel movie. If you're watching that, you'll notice that it has a Georgia Film Association logo. That's because a lot of the Marvel movies, and a lot of other movies as well, lately have been filming in Georgia. And there's a lot of reasons for that. First of all, the tax burden is pretty low. They can film there relatively cheaply compared to places like New York or LA or Hollywood itself. And so because of that, Georgia has seen a lot of wealth, a lot of growth, and a lot of business coming from the film industry. And you know, good for them. More power to them. But unfortunately, what has happened recently is that because of that, Hollywood, because they have an innate desire to control everything around them, and I don't know why, but they have this desire to control states that they don't even necessarily live in, they have been threatening to boycott the state of Georgia if this bill is signed into law. Now, the previous, and I would say spineless governor of Georgia, when pressure came from Hollywood, when it came about the religious freedom bill, you'll remember, came up in Georgia a couple years ago, they caved. They caved on it even though all this bill essentially said is that you, if you are a religious person and you own a business in the state of Georgia, then you, if you have a legitimate religious reason for not serving somebody in a certain capacity, and yes, the, the gay wedding cake or the, the florist for a gay wedding, those are the kind of scenarios that they were thinking of. These are the kind of scenarios that gave birth to this sort of bill. All it said was, if you are a person with legitimate, deep-seated religious conviction on an issue like this, then you can be exempt from any laws or ordinances that comes to this. And even though this was basically what the law already said, it was kind of a lateral movement, honestly. It just gave a little extra protection to the Christian business owner in this scenario. Hollywood, back then, threatened to boycott. And you know what? It worked. Because the governor backed down, refused to sign the bill into law. And I do think that that is a big part of the reason that Governor Kemp won his election to do stuff like this. Because now what's happening is that the governor is saying, and, and he said this specifically in a statement where, they, where he was asked about it, he said, you know what? Hollywood's not going to control us. I don't care what the people in Hollywood think. I care what the people of the state of Georgia think. And bravo. That took some courage. That took some gumption. Bravo, Governor Kemp. I, I applaud you for that. But then, of course, you have his former political rival, Stacey Abrams, who, uh, uh, good gracious, I think it's so weird that the Democrats here recently have liked to back losers. And I'm not talking about losers in the sense that they're deadbeats that live off of the government teat. Because, I mean, they've been backing people like that for a really long time. Bernie Sanders is a perfect example of that. A guy that didn't have a real job until he was 40, and that real job was in the government, and he's been on government jobs ever since. So I'm not talking about losers in that sense. I'm not talking about losers the way that Donald Trump would use, ah, oh, he's a loser. I'm not talking about that kind of loser. I'm talking about losers in the terms of political campaigns. Oddly enough, it seems to be a trend here recently that Democrats have gained some kind of weird affinity 
for people that lose elections. And in this case, you've got uh, Stacey Abrams, and you also have, oddly enough, Beto O'Rourke, Bob Francis O'Rourke, who is doing really well in the Democrat primaries despite the fact that he lost. Now, granted, give the guy credit where it's due, coming very close to unseating Ted Cruz, one of the best senators in the country in Ruby Red, Texas, that was a, an impressive feat. I'm not saying that it wasn't, but it still seems odd to me that the left is rallying behind people that lost elections. I find that really strange. And sometimes Republicans are guilty of that too, and that's not even necessarily always a bad thing. I'm just saying that here recently, it seems to me, and I don't know, maybe maybe it's just perception, but it's weird that the Democrats have seemed to rally behind these figures that are famous for losing their elections. Andrew Gillum would be another... Um, or what's it, was that his name? I, I I think so. Gillum, the guy who ran for governor in, in Florida, I think that was him. Anyway, they just have this weird affinity for backing and trying to turn into celebrities people that famously lost elections. And Stacey is no exception to this. She said earlier this week that not only is banning abortion evil, which, uh, you know, we could go back to the scripture which says, curse to those who call good evil and evil good, but nonetheless, I'll just ignore that point for right now. She was saying not only is it evil to ban abortion because you're banning a woman's rights, I guess she's not considering the women in the room or in the womb that about half of the children that are aborted happen to be female, but nonetheless, she's saying that it's also just bad for business, and she was specifically citing this thing that we were talking about with the film industry, and there are a whole lot of celebrities that are saying that they're going to boycott Georgia, which I saw the list of celebrities that vowed to do that. There were maybe three or four that I actually thought were decent actors anyway. So I really don't think that Georgia's going to suffer much financially from this. But I love the fact that Governor Kemp essentially said, you know what, if we take a financial hit, we take a financial hit. It's the right thing to do. And I admire that. Oddly enough, she is saying the exact opposite. What she is doing is going up and saying, well, it's bad for business, so we need to keep abortion legal. Now, what's hilarious to me is that Democrats suddenly act like they are very concerned about business and very concerned about finances and keeping businesses in a state when it suits their goals. And that seems to be the only time that they care about it at all. In other words, they want the policy, they want abortion to remain legal past the point that you can detect a heartbeat in the state of Georgia. And because of that, they're trying to use the argument, well, it would be financially in our best interest to do so. Who cares? And I say this as a small government, very pro-business right-winger. Who cares if you're making just stacks of money, if you're doing so at the cost of the most innocent among you? Who cares if you're wealthy, if children are dying on your watch? Keep in mind that in Egypt, they were afraid of revolt. They were afraid of the Hebrews rising up and they were afraid they were going to lose their slaves and then they have to do all their work themselves. And what was the plan that they came up with to stop this? They killed every child that was male within the borders of the Egyptian kingdom, every Jewish male under two years old. All of them. Except for Moses, and that's, of course, where that story comes from. But that was the rule. This was the plan that they came up with. They were willing to sacrifice children on the altar of convenience and financial gain. And that is exactly what Stacey Abrams is suggesting right now. She is saying, well, we, we want it to be convenient for the woman, and we want to be able to make money and not lose business, so we need to be sacrificing these children. It's a small price to pay, I guess, according to her. 
these people are like pagans. They are perfectly content with child sacrifice to their gods as long as it means that they get convenience and monetary benefit or political gainsmanship in, in certain circumstances as well. It really is a sad existence. Hey, to make sure you get all the updates, you need to go ahead and subscribe and click that little notification bell down there. That gets you a notification every time I post a new Bible lesson or political commentary. Now, I'm not saying that if you don't subscribe, it's because you hate America and Jesus, but I can't think of any other reason you wouldn't subscribe. <laughs>